Hey guys, Decayed Matter here. I wanted to do a new segment in anticipation for Metal Gear Rising Revengeance coming out in February. Uh, this is going to be called The Retrospective of Platinum Games, which is the developers of Metal Gear Rising. Uh, I'm just going to go through basically the games in my collection I own that were made by key members of what is Platinum Games nowadays. I'm not going to go into all of the internal games developed at Capcom. I'm going to focus more on the original titles they made. So, I guess just give a little history. Platinum Games uh, was founded in August 1st of 2006. Um, and then before that, they were known as Clover Studio, and that was founded July 1st, 2004. And before that, obviously, all their key members were in internal studios at Capcom. Clover Studio was kind of their first venture into being their own development team and making their own original titles. So, what I'm going to focus on first is their original games they did their members did work on games like Resident Evil and other Capcom games but I'm gonna go ahead and start with what I consider their first title as their studio which is Devil May Cry 1 so there you go here's the box um, Devil May Cry 1 was released in I think 2001 yes um, and this game was originally meant to be, uh, Resident Evil 4, but I guess they were feeling, you know, they wanted to do something different, so they just turned this into an original title. Um, yeah, and this was created by, uh, Hideki Kamiya, uh, Shinji Mikami, and Atsushi Inaba. I probably pronounce those horribly. But, uh, yeah. This is like an action title. I'm just going to go into some gameplay of it and talk a little more about it. So I hope you guys enjoy this. There's going to be more videos coming as uh, it gets closer to the Metal Gear Rising Revengeance release date. So I hope you guys enjoy that. I'm going to be showing footage right now of the HD collection version on PS3 just because it's a little more visually pleasing. So hopefully you enjoy these videos guys and keep watching. And here we are getting into the game itself. And right away you can see the distinct Platinum Games look. Stylish, over the top action. Yes, Devil May Cry 1 is what I consider the starting point of what Platinum Games is known for. And yeah, this was going to be Resident Evil 4 originally. Um, Hideki Kamiya wanted an over-the-top action game. I guess either they felt that wasn't really looking what Resident Evil is or he just wanted to do his own thing and not be constricted by the Resident Evil storyline. Which is kind of ironic because, you know, Resident Evil became a very action-y game now. So maybe in a way, they liked what they did with Devil May Cry and they wanted Resident Evil to have that kind of fast-paced action. And obviously, um, this was the start of them splitting games into missions, unlike Resident Evil where it was one continuous story. Um, some people didn't like that because they wanted it to be like Resident Evil where 
It was very cinematic feeling, like a movie. But Platinum Games have always kind of maintained that these are games and these are old school, like, you know, they're level based. They're very hard for hardcore gamers. I always respected them for that. And you can see with examining stuff, there's still elements of Resident Evil examining the environment and finding ways to proceed. But they've simplified everything compared to Resident Evil. And there's control elements that are similar. Like holding R1 to aim your gun and shoot. And obviously the camera angles and environments. Very gothic. I love these enemies. Munch on you. Shoot them and blood sprays and their skull shatters. I always love killing them with the shotgun. And yeah, you can definitely see with a background like this, this even looks a lot like some of the environments in Resident Evil 4. So you can definitely tell a lot of things still carried over from this development. Here we're going to get to a boss battle. Got to love that pulsating pillar there. Neat. And here these cutscenes kind of show the ridiculousness that they're known for. A bit of comedy and cheesiness thrown in. one of the bosses you encounter a couple times. Another thing they're known for is kind of repeating bosses. And having Dante banter between him and the boss. Something Devil May Cry is known for. You got something inside that big body of yours. Obviously, with their bosses, they're always big and over the top. And just crazy. And I'm playing this terribly, by the way, because I haven't played this for over a year. It's kind of a game you need to keep in practice. But uh, even though these games were really difficult, especially the bosses, you never felt that it was unfair or cheap. There was always a pattern you had to follow and weak points to exploit, which I'm doing by jumping on him and slashing. And, of course, since I'm playing terrible, I'm not getting a good uh, style rating. You can see that up there. The style rating is another thing they definitely kept in all their games. That way, you know, obviously you can get through the bosses and kill them and survive. But the real reason to keep replaying these games was to get your style up and, you know, play how they intend. Do varied combos and not get hit and keep your combo chains going. You see that was considered a mission. And there's a trophy since I have not played this HD collection much. Mostly played the PS2 version back in the day, and I think I even beat it on Dante Must Die difficulty, but obviously now I'm way out of practice with it. And yeah, you save between missions rather than having save points in Resident Evil like the typewriters. Yeah, the, um, the development team 
they were known as uh, Team Little Devils. And they were staff members from Capcom Production Studio 4. And obviously after this, they became Clover Games. Or Clover Studios. Made things like Beautiful Joe, God Hand. Here's the uh, Wraith type enemies. These were another one of my favorite enemies in the game. I just love the way their robes moved, the sounds they made, that big scissors. And here's another element that is carried over through all the Devil May Cry games is the secret missions. Just little bonus objectives to the completionists. And they unlocked items to upgrade your character, like your life or your devil trigger gauge. And obviously I'm playing this terribly. I forgot how to beat this. Yeah, there was always something a little extra to do to test your skills, and these type of games, these mini games, in a way they taught you how to play the game more effectively, even though they were just little bonus stuff. You can see me fail it super hard here. Obviously you can see the targeting system was automatic, just aims towards the closest enemy, unlike Resident Evil where you had to manually aim. So, I mean there was an element of Resident Evil but they tried to streamline it and make it their own thing. I'm wondering if uh, Metal Gear Rising will have secret areas like this. I'm guessing it will. And then you can see with camera angles like this and the architecture it looks very much like a like the castle level in Resident Evil 4. So maybe that was retained from this game. I did do a lot of research in Europe for this game. You can just kind of see the over top, the top action of him crashing through the hall. And they've done that for a while. And I must mention uh, this part. This was the first time you do this hallway battle, but if you go back, you can do this again and again, and it gives you tons of orbs. It's a great area to grind. If you want to get your your orbs up to buy skills, definitely do that a bunch of times. Gotta love these environments, very detailed. Some more of these Wraith guys. I have a million how they would go into the wall. You have to wait for them to come out. I mean, another thing with Platinum Games is collecting points and being able to use them to level up your skills. That's something they've always had and continue to do in games like Marionetta. Marionette enemies, I always love these. These always remind me of like, the cannon fodder of the Devil May Cry series. Kind of like the zombies in Resident Evil. I like how they bled when you hit them and they shattered. Kind of creepy too. And then I must mention, in this battle, I do the high-rise move that knocks them up in the air. And then you can juggle them with the pistols, which I'll do in a second here. This actually came from 
a glitch that happened in the development of Onimusha Warlords. Um, they found once they were hitting the air and repeatedly struck with the sword, they could be juggled, so they kind of retain that. You can see it here. Knock them up and juggle them. Just another element of the over the top action, kind of like, you know, old Hong Kong cinema or whatever. I always like that about the games. Very satisfying to do. And obviously, I'm playing terrible in my style rating. You see, there isn't going above C. So, but that's what's great about these games. You keep replaying them and hone your skills, and then you feel really cool getting the higher ratings. So, we're reaching the end of this video here. I hope you guys enjoyed this first part. There's more parts coming up up until the release of Metal Gear Rising, just to show my love for platinum games. So keep watching, the next game should be Beautiful Joe. Alright, goodbye.